Hello and welcome back to Blue Harvest Toys. Um, I've just been watching a video from Excel Excelsior's Domain. I'll put a link to his channel in the description, whatever. I might put it at the top there, just there, um, if I remember. Um, it's, it was looking through the Matchbox catalogue, and we've done that. We've looked through the Matchbox catalogues. Uh, I, I just I just found it. I, I, actually, I, I did find a lot of things that I did look for on eBay. There's a couple of things in there. So go watch that as well, after this, though. But it was um, it was wondering what happened to Matchbox, if they were still going. Now, they are, go they are still going. They are still going. The, they were bought by Hot Wheels, which is... It's totally ironic because the reason I think the reason why Matchbox failed is because they stopped making replica cars. And uh, when Hot Wheels came out, there were there were past the cars. There were, you know, the this this um this is what I'm going to look. At, we're going to look at um this, these books. But I just want to say that Hot Wheels came out with these fantastic cars, and then Matchbox changed, Corgi changed to a certain extent as well. And they they made replica cars for not for well for kids as well, but at Corgi were more like a adult collector replica car, and Matchbox were to a certain extent. So when Hot Wheels came along, and started making these cars that went faster. It changed Matchbox, and it's ironic that Hot Wheels now owns Matchbox. They still put Matchbox out, but as Matchbox, but as replica cars. So I just find that very ironic. The Hot Wheels are still out there as more... I know they're the collector item. A lot of collectors collect them. But they are more like a kiddie's car. And the Matchbox end of their... They keep them separate. They keep Hot Wheels and Matchbox separate. A Matchbox is more of a collector's um, replica car. And they're really realistic. They are realistic cars, with Hot Wheels are uh, similar to that. But um, so we're going to look at Giles Chapman's book here. I do have it twice. <laughs> I did buy it. Um, Twelve ninety nine. This is the hardback version, which came out after the softback version, and um, I could not find it for love no money. I want. I've read it. I've read it a couple of times. I want to start reading it again. Um, there's not many pictures in this, unfortunately, so we won't be looking through this. There's some nice pictures in there, but the mainly mainly in the, in the middle. And that it just it's just all the text. Which if you if you want if you're into your diecast, you're into your Dinky Corby, Corgi and Matchbox or any diecast. Any in fact, please go get this. Amazon I think still may have it, but I thought I'd lost it. It was actually under here. <laughs> it was under the table. Believe it or not. So that's that's staying out. That is staying out. So we do have that. We're going to put that to one side. But I did buy this. This is the original version. And this was £20. Uh, I didn't pay £20 for it. I can't remember how much I did pay for it. But um, it is the soft cover version. It's the same book. Same, same. I don't know if there's a... Up, I don't know if that's updated. I think that might be updated with the newer one. But uh, sorry about the shadows. Um, it's quite late. Um, so we're going to... I just want to do, we'll have a quick look through it because it does have a lot of uh, pictures, There's a lot of, this is just pure information and the, actually, I must admit the first time I read it, it was just all uh, nerdy car related stuff, I, sorry if, if it, that offends you but uh, I'm a nerd, I will, I feel you admit that and the second time and the third, so the, I am reading this again, I'm, I'm quite halfway through this one. So I read that twice and I've started reading this one and it's making more sense. <laughs> so I must be more of a nerd this time reading it than the last time. So we start off with Dinky. It's the story of Dinky. Frank Hornby. Hornby. <laughs> it's, 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 it's funny how Frank Hornby made Mark Meccano. Frank Hornby. If it weren't for Frank Hornby, I don't think we'd have toys in the UK. <laughs> Frank Hornby made Meccano, but also made Hornby trains, obviously. And they, made, they were made out of Meccano to start off with. Don't want to go too deep into that. We can do a we can do a separate video on that. 
But then he started making dinky toys. So again, that where would it be would have been without Frank Ormby? I don't know. Um there's a old fact you will you will find that it's mostly women that worked for these uh, toy factories and we'll go into the matchbox way of doing things in a bit um, I think we we so we're going we carrying on with dinky so it's like linear story of of all three so we've got dinky obviously dinky started first before the war uh, look at that old shop that's brilliant I love that you don't see toy shops like that anymore so yeah um this this obviously the story is linear but the the pictures will show different things as a matchbox thing there so obviously dinky was meccano whereas matchbox matchbox was lesney so <laughs> so the the like Korg, um, Corgi, Matchbox, I think it were just names from a, a bigger company. And the Matchbox, I mean, the Matchbox story is is absolutely brilliant. And, um, yeah. <laughs> for popular being a popular saloon of the masses, for just £100 in 1933, it helped spark a craze for cars and motoring among schoolboys, which Dunky Toy sales benefited hugely. So yeah, we've got the dinky. That's one of the first things that Matchbox did. In the die cast. Or Lesney, it should have said Lesney because they, they were Lesney before then. And then this it's, it's a story where this, well this, this is one of the first uh, Matchbox cars or vehicles or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's, it's one of the one of the Lesney inventors, one of the, the CEOs, or if you want to call it CEOs, one of the owners of Lesney um, had a had a girl who was school wouldn't let them have a toy unless it was could fit in a matchbox. So that gave him the idea to make a car that would fit in a matchbox. So we're going, going on to uh, Corgi there. Uh, feature pack Corgi toys. It's just, it is so detailed this book. It's just one of those things that you really need to read if you're into all this. Golden area of uh, British toy cars, Dinky again. And Dinky just sunk out of out of, I mean, it was, it was the late 70s, I believe. Uh, golden era. Golden era of British Stockhouse Matchbox. Uh, 1960. So there, that's this is what I'm talking about, about, about Matchbox. About Lesney, should I say. They bust the workers in. They bought, they bought a lot of buses, which is just a shed load of buses and they bust all the workers in for free and they were mostly women that uh, were on shifts so the kids would come home from school they would go to, to go on the shifts <laughs> to make these uh, just imagine if we had been a job like that it would have been boring it would have been look it would have been the same thing over and over again for all day for eight hours whatever how many hours they worked but uh, yeah oh, I've, heard, I've just I've just done a review on that one the mini so yeah the corgi um, I don't know which one I like best I like them all I like them all Yeah, electric, of course, it was part of uh, Meccano, part of Hornby. Spot on. Which was another die cast company from Triang. I uh, th think Meccano, did Meccano buy Triang? I think that was it. So we're going to Hot Wheels. It does talk a bit about Hot Wheels as well, simply because. 
of what happened when Hot Wheels came onto the market. It changed the market. Matchbox made their super fast wheels. Before then, they were just just the there were rubbish axles, there were rubbish wheels and they wouldn't go far. Hot Wheels came along with I mean look at look how detailed these are and just so good and they got they got um aluminium alloys and they got um aluminium um axles and um the wheels actually had a little groove on them so the friction there wouldn't there wouldn't be as much friction when they went down they went down the track corgi brought out this this track matchbox brought out the track there was no track like this until hot wheels came along i've got that <laughs> so yeah it's just finding out these tiny little details about about die cast cars there we go batmobile and bat boat my favorite Probably my favourite toy of all time is the Batmobile. So the rivals, it's, it's all about the rivalry that went. Uh, Hot Wheels barges in and causes mayhem, which they did. So it's all about that. Seventies struggles, which they did. They struggled to keep up with Hot Wheels. They struggled financially. That's it, Jack, Jack O'Dell decided to retire. 1973. Fighting Furies there, look. Matchbox had brought those in. Uh, so we've got sad endings for Dinky. I do have that, but not that colour. I've got the, the Purdy one. Triang again. Diecast, uh, Dinky Kits. I tried to do, they tried to do everything. Oh, look at that cling on. Why has it got red? <laughs> Prototype. So yeah, we've got we've we've, we've gone through these, some of these catalogs. Uh, I'll probably leave a link to that as well. They are quite interesting those. So the the box has changed all the time. Packaging. Super fast wheels. Look at that. How cool is that? Vauxhall Guildsman. That's pretty cool. I remember having that. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying about Matchbox were like, you know, just proper cars, just normal cars. And then Speed Kings, they came out with all this now, then after Hot Wheels came on the market. Battle Kings, and obviously the Adventure 2000 as well. Uh, models of yesteryear, Matchbox came out they were quite popular at the time matchbox annual oh. ah, I have got one of those clickers I've got a cargotronic clicker <laughs> I wish I still had one of them though I have that I do have that Plymouth stock car I do have that did little to save the brand so we've got yeah changing the packaging I didn't like when they changed the packaging and the corgis. It did go downhill a bit. But the thing is, oh, there we go, look at that, DB5. The thing is, former Top Gear presenter James May with his car that changed the world, a tribute to corgis, ingenuity. That's, I've done a video on that. I totally agree with that. There was just so much in that car that the packed into that tiny little car. I forgot what I was going to say now. So we've got the Batmobile. Yes, I do have that one now. Thank you, Paul. Um, there was a job lot in the Yorkshire last week. He had, he had the blue version. He had the white version as well. But he had so much stuff in it. So we've got, I've got a Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Got the James Bond. Got Batmobile. Don't have a fab one. Carno magazine. So they just had a lot of obviously magazines came out, but they had the mostly catalogues. The, the, I knew I knew the Matchbox catalog were coming out in the eighties because I would I got them all. So Dinky had the licenses for Jerry Anderson. I think Corgi. All oh, these. Look at all these. 
Yeah, and they start to fail though, I think. I think that's one of the reasons. The Shadow, Interceptor. Corgi got the license for nearly everything. So we've got Starsky and Hutch. Um, obviously, they had the Aston Martin and the, and the, um, the Batmobile. But then they had they did just picked up licenses for every t shirt t TV show that was going. Dinky tried to come back with the the Angel um, the Space Nineteen Ninety Nine Eagle Transport uh, Corgi again with the James Bond cars. Where are they now? That's uh, a story for another day. <laughs> So if you're interested in all this um, and you want me to go through, uh, this is what I like. If you want me to go through the um, the story of each of these these companies, I'm also going to say brands because we th we think of them as the brands, but they are companies. So you got Meccano, you got Metoy, you got Lesnar. That's those are the names behind the brands. So again, this is um, a book. If you're really interested in this, get this book, please. It is absolutely fantastic. And it, it tells you so much, so much crammed into these little pages. And I say, I've, I've read it twice. I've, I'm, gonna re I'm, I'm reading it a third time just to get it. There's a lot of information to get in your head. So thank you for watching. I hope you like this. Please, please leave a like and please leave a comment if you want me to do either Dinky Kogi or Matchbox. I can't remember if I've done any of those histories. I want to do them all justice. I want to do. I don't want to do them like this with all all in one. But this, the story of this, would be nice as a video. But it's it's all there in the book. So I'm going to do maybe link all three. Maybe do like a, a, a trilogy. But these Hot Wheels as well. But anyway. Right, I'm going to go now. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. May the toys be with you. Excuse me, have anybody got any buckle?